I've lived in my house in Melbourne's southeast for over 20 years, and my front garden is a lovely way to greet me when I come home from work. I've planted it so that I can pick it and give a lot away. It's also very drought tolerant. It's got things like salvias, Jerusalem sage, and all sorts of things that don't need a lot of watering. But it's my back garden where I do most of my living, so come this way. Small gardens and courtyards are how most of us who live in cities get our green fix. And with a bit of planning and prioritising, they can give you everything you need. My courtyard performs as many functions as a bigger garden. It's somewhere for me to propagate, to experiment, grow some food, process compost, but also a space for some beauty, somewhere to sit and enjoy being outdoors. If space is at a premium, well, planning then becomes really essential. And before you put anything into your garden, you really should figure out what you want to get out of your garden. Do you want food? Do you want something edible? Or is it simply that you want ornamental? What about sitting and reading? You need a space for it. And what about outdoor entertaining? Whatever it is, you need to think about it and prioritise. So if I show you my little courtyard garden, I hope you'll get some ideas. Every garden, no matter how small, needs a place where you can process the green waste. I've got a compost bin in the corner and it's terrific for things like garden clippings. But for smaller stuff, sort of kitchen waste, a worm farm is absolutely fantastic. I am besotted with my worms. Look at them. Look at that. And there's little baby ones there. Look at those. They're beautiful. Even if your place only has a balcony, you can still find a way of composting. As important as the work areas are, I also need colour in my life. In a small space, it's a great idea to have a surprise packet. Just one thing that really fits the bill and gives you an excitement, and this is the one at the moment. It's called a Chilean or a Bolivian nasturtium. So I planted it. I thought, what's going to happen here? I've never grown a tropiolum tricolour before. And first of all, the leaves came out and I thought, they're very fragile looking leaves. I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but away they went, right up and around. Then they had these little tiny flower buds, small as. They grew and grew and I'd come out every day and I'd look at it and go, wow! It was getting bigger and bigger. Even so, each flower is only the size of your thumbnail. And look at them, they are so extraordinary. I get excitement from that. That's done me for six months. When that's finished, well, it's given me such pleasure. But I'll bring another plant out so that you've got a rotation of things, a succession of excitement. If you don't have much space, then you'll want to use as many surfaces as you can, including vertical. I have jasmine because it gives me a wall of green and when it's in flower, I just love the smell. Climbers can, of course, be also useful to cover up a boring old fence. Another thing to take note of before you get planting is check how much sun and light your garden actually gets. Not just during the day, but during all seasons, because it really does affect the way your garden works. That's why a deciduous tree, especially a small one, might be a good option in your garden. I've chosen this one. It's a good old crepe myrtle. I planted it a good 20 years ago, and I really like it, even though you can see that it's pretty strange looking in winter because you've got to prune it back. But look at all the little new shoots coming. Springtime is joyous. It'll eventually get a beautiful canopy and shade all of that part down there where I can sit in summer. And yet, in winter, it lets the light come through. It's a perfect tree, the crepe myrtle, for me because of those lovely trunks. And it's one of those trees that I just give a real thumbs up to. This is my fair weather vegetable garden. It's because in winter, I can't grow any vegetables at all. The sun is too low and that fence there is shading it. You've got to know where the sun hits the different parts of your garden. When the sun is higher, I do grow summer crops, lots of them. And when I still want edibles in winter, I grow them in pots. That way, my cool season veggie patch is portable and I can group the pots together in the sunniest parts of the garden. 
Another good reason to position your pots in a cluster is that it works like strength in numbers. The pots can easily dry out with the wind and really hot sun, so if you group them together so they're like a little collection of friends, just to help them kick along a bit. And there's a word that I really love. It's apricity. Apricity means the sun, the warmth of the sun on your back. And that's why I really like a table that's movable and you can put it around wherever the sun happens to be. My little garden brings me joy every day. I'm very lucky to see some fabulous gardens throughout Australia and overseas, but I'm even luckier because I just love my own little space. <laughs>